means to live a life of fulfillment, a, a life of significance, a path of joy, it comes from the Zoroastrian religion. Zoroast Zoroastrianism is the ancient religion of Persia or an old religion of Persia. It's named after a man who lived in Persia either about 2,500 years ago or 3,000, over 3,000 years ago, based depending on who is judging his name. Uh, in Greek is known as Zoroaster, which means the undiluted star. Okay, so a brilliant star, not diluted star. Or more often Zarathustra in the ancient Persian language, ancient form of Persian language or Avestan. And Zarathustra means he who manages camels. Zoroaster said to have had visions of supernatural beings and given the command by the god named Ahura Mazda, which by the way, Ahura Mazda is, is who the name Mazda car is named after. Okay, he was commanded to give certain teachings for the promotion of good in this world. So depending on who you're asking, some non-Zoroastrian scholars date the beginnings of the religion to 1400 to 1200 before the Common Era, starting in northeastern Iran. Okay. According to Parsi chronology, those of present-day Zoroastrians themselves, and there's uh, anywhere between 700,000 and a few million Zoroastrians in the world today, they were um, in eastern Iran up until more recent times in the last 30 to 150 years more and more have emigrated to escape persecution in Iran and settled in parts of India especially Mumbai is a large Zoroastrian community there's Zoroastrians in the United States too hard to judge how many but definitely at least in the thousands Okay. So according to the Parsis, or another name for Zoroastrians, the religion started about 2,500 years ago in West Iran. Okay. So for Zoroastrians, there's two cosmic forces at work in the world. One is the supreme being or, or God named Ahura Mazda, which means light of wisdom. And this creator God is responsible for all that is good. All that is beautiful, light of wisdom, light of compassion, light of beauty that's at work in the world. But there's another very powerful force at work in the world. This is a sort of evil god, a kind of super powerful Satan, if you will. And this being known as Ingram Manu is translated as the destructive spirit. These two forces are in a huge cosmic battle. Okay. One trying to defeat the other, Ingram Manu trying to create the triumph of destruction and evil and chaos in the world. Ahura Mazda trying to make the cosmic of all that is good, holy spiritual, sacred at work in the world. So they're in a cosmic battle. This is the forces of good against the forces of evil. And this sort of story reminds us of some of our favorite movies and, and books, right? the little battle of good against evil, some of our favorite video games perhaps as well. right? Um, the Harry Potter story, Harry versus Voldemort. He, he must not be named. I just named him. Ha. Huh. Um, the right Luke Skywalker against Darth Vader, trying to save Darth Vader, or against the Emperor, the force of evil, and trying to create the triumph of, of good in the world. Right. This sort of story, the um, Gandalf and the and the hobbits, Frodo Baggins, or have you against the um, evil eye um, sort of creature 
um, of force and be able to destroy it through dropping the ring of power in the, in the lava pit, right? Um, right? So this is the classical story of good against evil, right? For Zoroastrians, one should be on the side of good, not choose the side of evil, right? Uh, according to their mythology, the god of all that is good, Ahura Mazda, will eventually win, will triumph. So, a smart gambler, even, if they know how the cards are going to unfold or how the how the dice are going to let lay down right there they're, they're gonna <laughs> bet on the winning winning bet right so bet on a Mazda, bet on on good what is good holy beautiful okay bet with a Hura Mazda. so through one can best do this by practicing the good in their own lives and so having good or pure thoughts good or pure words and good or pure deeds is the way to be on the side of the God of all that is good in this life, the, the God of wisdom, the light of wisdom. Okay. We can be on the force of good, helping destroy against the force of evil, or engage in part and parcel to this cosmic battle. We become as Luke Skywalker and Harry Potter in everyday lives, uh, helping in the triumph of, of good in the everyday world. And indeed, according to Zoroastrian, concepts of the afterlife these good thoughts good words and good deeds are very real things they're not these flimsy arbitrary things and one sees their substance the substance of what you did the one substance or you achieve the substance of how you act in this world you see these things embodied on a bridge in which one is to cross on the day of judgment on the on the last days and the days when you die or perhaps a moment when everyone dies and the day of judgment has come collectively depending on the interpretation right so on that bridge one meets what one has achieved in one's life if one has had an abundance of good good and pure thoughts words and deeds and one encounters a beautiful woman on that bridge who is the embodiment of all that one has achieved if one has done poorly and has been on the side on the side of anger manu right and full of lies and destructive behaviors and violent behaviors and infidelity and uh, been a poor friend right all these things um then one sees one's deeds and embodied as in as an ugly hag um, or an ugly old woman in the, according to the zoroastrian views of the afterlife okay. such imagery may have influenced christianity and islam and islam's concept of the huris or these beautiful maidens that accompany the righteous uh, in the afterlife or concept of beautiful beautiful angels women angels accompany accompanying good christians playing their harp in the clouds perhaps influencing christianity christianity's imagery if one has not heard of Zoroastrianism, one from a Christian background might be surprised to know that they ha have heard of it. The, the wise men who come from the east, follow a star and visit little baby Jesus when he's in the manger, that these, according to most interpretations, were Zoroastrians following a prophecy they had about the savior of the world being being born imminently based on certain signs they saw in, in astronomy, being star watchers. And, uh, and so according to that legend, he came bearing, bearing gifts and glad tidings to the parents of Jesus. They're called often Magi, M-A-G-I, in Matthew, um, the Gospel of Matthew in, in, in the New Testament.